Some major players have bitten the dust in recent months, but is there a chance they could come back? Hey guys, welcome to The Binger. Marvel has presented us with some of the best characters in history. Who doesn't love a crime-fighting, god-smashing hero or three? It's not always sunshine and rainbows, though. Sometimes it ends badly, and it looks like it's all over. Or is it? Join us as we take a look at 10 times Marvel characters were resurrected, both in the MCU and in the comics. All right, all right, this is kind of an obvious one, but it's also a brilliant way to kick things off. Back in Avengers 3, the fandom was sent into utter disarray. Thanos managed to get his giant purple mitt on all the Infinity Stones, despite the team's best efforts. They fought hard, but the Mad Titan was just too devious and was able to complete his plan. When he did, we lost a multitude of characters, including but not limited to Black Panther, Scarlet Witch, Doctor Strange, and Spider-Man. These losses were utterly devastating, leaving a giant hole in the MCU. Logic dictated that these guys were somehow going to come back, but we didn't know how. For a whole year before Endgame was released, we weren't sure if they would all make it back safely. As it turns out, they did. It was the ones left on the ground that we should have been concerned about. Thanks to Tony's heroic actions, everyone who was dusted returned unscathed. We lost Black Widow and Iron Man in the process, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Marvel likes to hit you when you least expect it. The highs are high, but the lows couldn't get any lower. 2012's Avengers was a triumph for the MCU in more ways than one. Things were still in their relatively early stages, following on from Iron Man's release in 2008. This was the first time that all of our favorite characters got together, but secondary characters were just as important. Let's not forget the moment that Agent Phil Coulson turned into a complete fanboy around Cap. It was one of those beautifully crafted moments that was both hilarious and cringeworthy. It was also a setup for things to come. Later on, Coulson is offed by Loki. Nick Fury uses his demise as an incentive for the rest of the team to get their act together and throw down. However, fans were baffled when he turned up in the series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. As it turns out, Fury took Coulson, who really was toast, to a research facility. There, doctors used a special serum and some complex medical procedures to bring him back to life. It wasn't easy, and he actually went nuts after being restored. In order to set him on the straight and narrow, S.H.I.E.L.D. had to wipe his memory. If they hadn't, he would have been no good to anybody. Nick Fury himself also played a little bit of trickery with the mortal coil, although it was all on purpose. By Captain America Winter Soldier, it was clear that not everything was as it seemed in the MCU. In one of the most epic car chases in the franchise, Fury is on his way to meet Agent Hill when he's attacked. Hydra has been secretly invading S.H.I.E.L.D. for years, and when Fury stumbles onto some info, they want him gone. Fury manages to evade the initial attack, only to be shot while visiting Cap. We see Surgeon's battle to save his life before it's announced that he's really gone for good. It's only later on in the movie that we discover, along with the Avengers, that Nick is alive. It was all part of his master plan to take down the bad guys. It was a truly convincing demise, and if we're honest, leaves a lot of questions hanging in the air. Either way, we've got to accept the MCU for what it is. If it wants to hand us a character back, then who are we to argue, right? For a character that never said much, or at least not anything we could understand, Groot was so loved. The huge tree-like being was a key part of Guardians of the Galaxy. He brought an element of humor to the mishmash of recruits, even though we couldn't understand him. It was clear that he loved his friends, and he sacrificed himself to protect them. It's arguably one of the most emotional moments that we've ever seen in a superhero movie. Rocket begs his friend to reconsider, asking him why he's doing it. Groot simply replies, we are Groot. However, it's not quite the end. The raccoon takes a splinter of Groot, which he plants. When it grows, it becomes the baby Groot we see in Volume 2 and the teenage Groot we see in the last two Avengers movies. For a long time, fans thought that this was a regeneration of Groot, but that's not quite the case. The current version of Groot is the OG's son, according to director James Gunn. Although he's not exactly the same character, he is as close as it gets. And if that's not deserving of a place on this list, then what is? We're heading into comic book territory with this one. Spider-Man is a quick-thinking dude with the ability to move fast. 
This usually serves him pretty well, but there are occasions when he hasn't been quick enough. In Secret Wars, Spidey succumbs to Kulan Gath when he takes over Manhattan. Later on in the graphic novels, he perishes while fighting Thanos. He then fails again in Clone Saga after being poisoned by a character called the Owl. Sounds like a hoot. In true Marvel fashion, he's been brought back from the great beyond more times than we can shake a stick at. The ways in which he returns are far too vast for us to get into here. Just trust us when we say that it's everything you'd expect from the crackpots at Marvel. We say crack pots in the most complimentary way, of course. Without those fantastical brains, we wouldn't have any of this, and then what would we be doing? Without these superheroes, there would be a huge void in our hearts and our viewing schedules. Making actual plans with other human beings on a Saturday night takes way too much effort, so all hail Marvel. Out of all the characters that have been introduced to the MCU, Loki is the one that keeps coming back. The funny thing is, we know this, and yet his passing seems so genuine every time. In the first movie, Loki falls from the Crystal Bridge in Asgard. We think he's a goner, but he falls through a wormhole and bumps into Thanos. In Thor Dark World, he's added again as the god of mischief. Thor and Jane are in the world of the Dark Elves, and Loki gets skewered by an enemy. Cue a Kleenex-worthy scene where the two brothers say goodbye. Thor is devastated and tells his daddy Odin that he can't possibly be king now. After he leaves, Odin is revealed to be Loki in disguise. Thor himself doesn't find out about his brother's trickery until the third movie, Ragnarok. Then, in Avengers 3, Loki is crushed by Thanos' mighty hand. It looks like he really is worm food this time, until the gang performs the time heist. When they do, they unwittingly set a version of Loki free from capture. We now know that Loki is pegged for a standalone Disney Plus release, so he's definitely back. He's the god that just won't quit. And thank goodness, life would be dull without him. One of the most famous resurrections of all time is thanks to Captain America himself. When we first see Steve, he's a scrawny guy with good intentions and a lot of honor. Fast forward to post-Super Soldier Serum and he's a fully-fledged hero. At the end of the first movie, he crashes the Hydra bomber into the Arctic to stop it from going to New York. This was a complete setup for the Avengers movie, but it's important to remember that everyone thought he was gone. Hardcore Marvel fans would have known otherwise, but for the casual cinema-goer, it looked cut and dry. All of his friends and family mourned him, too, so there's that. Shield pulled Cap from the ice and got him back into tip-top shape so he could become a pivotal part of the Avengers team. Up until recently, at least. In Endgame, he turned the mantle over to Falcon after going back in time to keep that dance date with Peggy. Poor Gamora. She really had a shot at happiness with Quill, and then Daddy Dearest ripped it all away. It took the two lovebirds long enough to admit their feelings for each other. Avengers 3 saw the green beauty used as a pawn in her father's plans. In order to get the Soul Stone, Thanos threw his daughter over the ledge. It simultaneously proved that he really did love her, and he was willing to do anything to get what he wanted. Fans hoped that she would be resurrected with the reverse of the snap somehow, but that wasn't going to happen. Instead, like Loki, Gamora was given a new shot at life after being pulled from her own timeline. Although the version of Gamora we know and love is gone, there's still hope for the character. At least she's breathing, even if she doesn't know any of her fellow Guardians yet. It will be interesting to see how she reappears in Guardians Volume 3 and what lies in store for her and Quill's relationship. Or her friendship with the other members, for that matter. It's not much fun being on a ship with someone who can't remember you, that's for sure. We hated to watch Tony succumb to his injuries after undoing the snap. Although it came as some surprise, the genius tech wizard had been on borrowed time when you think about it. There have been multiple occasions when he's barely scraped through, so maybe we should have been more prepared for his ultimate demise. There are tons of fan theories flying around out there about how Tony could return. This is all fueled by the notable silence from Robert Downey Jr. about the end of his Iron Man days. He's typically a pretty private actor, but wouldn't most people at least give an interview to lament? He did play Iron Man for over over a decade. In the comics, Tony comes back to life multiple times. In the 90s, he was replaced by a teenage version of himself. Then, later on during the onslaught, he perished and was brought back to life by Franklin Richards. In Civil War II, he bit the dust once more, before having to reboot his body to come back. It really does make sense for fans to theorize about Tony's future. When it comes to this guy, nothing is set in stone. Anything could happen. 
Scarlet Witch and Vision managed to forge an unlikely romance in the past couple of years, but it was ill-fated. As the Mind Stone was an integral part of his makeup, Wanda and Vision sought to keep it from Thanos. Wanda made the ultimate sacrifice for her bow and destroyed it and him to save the universe. They underestimated Thanos' power quite spectacularly. The Mad Titan simply undid the events and ripped the stone from Vision's head. Wanda herself becomes a victim of the snap, but returns to kick butt in Endgame. Vision is still six feet under, but there's hope. Marvel Studios have given away some of the game by confirming WandaVision, a miniseries dedicated to the pair. There's also evidence that suggests that Vision will be coming back, as it happens in the comics. He is made up of a sort of artificial intelligence, after all. With the skills that these guys have, it's only a matter of time before he's restored. In the comics, it's Hank Pym that saves the day. Only Vision doesn't come back fully himself. He lacks the same humanity that endeared him to Wanda. It's not quite the reunion everyone hoped for. Which characters do you wish would live forever? Sound off in the comments below. Before you go, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button too so you don't miss a thing from us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.